very good uh, afternoon and a warm welcome here to St. Michael and All Angels. Um, it is really good to be hosting this ordination service and we're particularly proud of our uh, curate being ordained but also um, absolutely privileged to be uh, welcoming all the other uh, curates to be ordained priest uh, this afternoon. Just a few points to make um, and that is please continue to wear your masks in church, I'm sure you will. Um, and in the sharing of peace, um, we commend you to do that in a sort of spiritual and non-physical way. I'm sure you're used to it by now. Uh, for communion, is, does anyone require a gluten-free wafer? Wonderful, okay. Um, so at communion, the, the four candidates will be uh, receiving first and then you, the congregation, if you would like to sort of l line up in an orderly, socially distanced way, then the bishop will um, commune you from, from this point here. Um, and then when you have received your communion, please then retreat back either down the north or the south transept back to your seats. There are some priests here in the congregation and it would be wonderful if you could actually stand at the time of the ordination, um, staying where you are, please, um, and um, hold out your hand uh, for the candidates um, and for the, the flow of the Holy Spirit to, to reach them. Um, when we are receiving communion, I should have said that there's, there's only one kind, the host. Um, the bishop will be the only person who will be consuming the chalice. There's no physical collection today, but um, I'm sure that um, you know you are, if your heart takes you there, uh, where you can um, provide some donation to. Um, and also just a reminder about mobile phones, please do switch them off or put them on mute. We'll have a moment's silence uh, before the procession. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Peace be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to the service of ordination. It's wonderful 
that some of us at least are able to gather together uh, to mark this particular and wonderful and joyous moment of the journey uh, when uh, Claire and Tom and Tom and Nikolai are ordained priests in the Church of God. It's also wonderful that so many people can join us online uh, via the streamed service. Uh, there are about 30 of us here in St Michael's and we know that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, not only the church invisible, praying for us and with us today, but the church virtual, uh, scattered across the diocese and no doubt uh, across the world, as we pray together for the gift of the Holy Spirit on this occasion. Uh, we are uh, here in church wearing mass, I will be for a uh, part of the service, and all the congregation are massed, uh, but I have a very strong inner conviction that were mass to be taken off, there will be expressions of joy on, on every face today as we pray together and rejoice in the gift of new ministry to God's church. It's very, very good to welcome Canon Rachel Carnegie as our preacher today. Uh, Rachel has been leading the ordinance in a virtual retreat uh, over the last uh, few days and it's very good she's able to be with us in person uh, to preach for us. Uh, Rachel is the director of the Anglican Alliance and is also an associate priest in the Dorchester team ministry in our own diocese. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of his kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given particular ministries. Priests are ordained to lead God's people in the offering of praise and in the proclamation of the gospel. They share with the bishop in the oversight of the church, delighting in its beauty and rejoicing in its well-being. They are to set the example of the Good Shepherd always before them as the pattern of their calling. With the bishop and their fellow presbyters, they are to sustain the community of the faithful by the ministry of word and sacrament, that we may all grow into the fullness of Christ and be a living sacrifice acceptable to God. Reverend Father in God, I present Nikolai Christensen, Tom Howell, Claire Leal and Tom Murray to be ordained to the office of priest in the Church of God. Have those whose duty it is to know these deacons and examine them found them to be of godly life and sound learning? They have. Do they believe them to be duly called to serve God in this ministry? They do. Do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry? I do so believe. I invite the Archdeacon to confirm that the candidates have taken the necessary oaths and made the declaration of assent. They have duly taken the oath of allegiance to the sovereign and the oath of canonical obedience to the bishop. They have affirmed and declared their belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness.
both here in church and in our homes. Let us pray. God, our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, each may be an instrument of your love. And give to your servants now to be ordained the needful gifts of grace, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus has washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts reflect your loving purposes. Amen. Over the last few days, I've got to go Tom Clare and Sly and Tom over Zoom calls as we shared together in their pre-ordination retreat. So it is a really great joy to see you here today in person coming to your ordination as priests. And for what I've already learnt from, about, from others about them, about their service through churches, through schools and community outreach, many are blessed by their ministry. It's also lovely to see family and friends here in church and to know that many are joining us virtually online. And my prayer is that we are all bound together spirit in this moment. Whether in church here or online, we're here to show our love and support. Buildings do not define us. That is not the church. The church is the living stones built into a spiritual house, as we heard in our first reading. The church is the people, living stones, chosen and precious in God's sight, and built upon the cornerstone of Jesus. When countries first began to lock down and church buildings began to close, a friend of mine in Latin America sent me this picture, which I hope you can see. It's of um, a group of people, some standing on the shoulders of others, and then at one end, standing in a tower with the cross up on high. It's just this wonderful image that the church is the people. And the message that went from my friend in Latin America was this. The church does not close, only the building, because we are the church, the living body of our Lord Jesus, and we are everywhere. So it is the people who are the living stones which form the church, and this has become so abundantly clear during this pandemic. As people face this time of separation, of anxiety, of loss, we've needed to reimagine our ministry, our community connectedness, of pastoral care by phone, of soul-filled worship online. It's been a time of extraordinary creativity. All of this despite being distant. Churches have been there alongside community groups and other faith organisations, reaching out to the lonely, to those who are shielding, to people in their time of need and sorrow. God is truly showing us the seeds of God's kingdom at this time. And it's no coincidence that so many godly, committed people are being called by God to ordination at this time. For it is for a time such as this. And as we navigate this disorienting time, priestly ministry has a particular focus to bring courage and encouragement to the people, helping them to see God's marvellous light, as we heard in that reading from 1 Peter. On Friday evening, Bishop Stephen gave a profound charge to those coming to ordination as priests. He quoted from Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. This call to comfort God's people resonates deeply at this time. And as Bishop Stephen shared, comforting is speaking healing to the heart. It's spiritual work, the work of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Tom, Nikolai, Tom and Claire, you come as priests to comfort God's people in this time of distress and also help them to know confidence and joy in their role as living stones, all standing together as the church, the holy and royal priesthood of all believers, 
reflecting Christ's light out into the world. All are involved in honouring God and serving God's people. For in the Gospel reading, we learn so clearly from Jesus how he wishes us how to respond to his example of servanthood. Jesus has been kneeling at the feet of his disciples, washing their feet, an act of humble and loving service. Then Jesus says to his disciples, So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. This instruction is the calling of all God's people to serve each other and the world, but speaks particularly as we meet today to the role of priests serving their church and communities with care and compassion and humility. A little later in that story, Jesus expands on this lesson to his disciples saying, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus spoke these words the night before he gave himself to be crucified. What greater example of love than Jesus laying down his life for our salvation? Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. This is a powerful, holy and liberating understanding of love, of mutual love which binds us together with one another and with God. These four new priests today are called to love, to serve and to nurture God's people. What we learn from Jesus' teaching is that we also must love and care for them in their ministry. They are precious, a gift to us as courageous, compassionate and contemplative priests. But their road ahead, while often full of holy joy, may also sometimes be a hard and demanding one, especially in these days of COVID. So as they love and care for you, please love and care for them. Over our retreat these past few days, we've been reflecting on Jesus' example of loving service and how he reaches out to bind people's hearts with God and with one another in generous, mutual love. We were looking at Jesus' example of servanthood as he comes unrecognized alongside the disciples on the road to Emmaus, the Sunday after his crucifixion. On the journey, the disciples experience Jesus' compassionate listening, his empowering teaching, his loving humility, accepting their hospitality. And then finally, Jesus offers of himself in taking, blessing, breaking, and sharing the bread. And you too, as priests, will have that extraordinary privilege of breaking and sharing the bread in the Eucharist. In Emmaus, it was at that moment of breaking and sharing the bread that the disciples knew themselves to be truly beloved, and they recognized Jesus. Then they hurried back to Jerusalem, transformed, their hearts on fire, burning to share the news with others. That they have seen the risen Lord. In this fervor, this courageous, passionate fervor to spread the good news, this gives such compelling evidence of Jesus' resurrection that this group of humble, scattered disciples, terrified after the crucifixion, should gain the courage to speak out their belief in the risen Christ, traveling across the known world, facing persecution, witnessing to their faith. They carried in their hearts the pattern of Christ's self-giving love, and their hearts were on fire. They knew themselves to be Easter people. So Nicholas, Claire, Tom, and Tom, you too are Easter people alongside all believers. And as priests, you are called to serve the church and the world leading in word and sacrament and sharing the good news of Jesus. At this time especially, you're called to bring comfort, love and encouragement to others and also humbly to receive that comfort, love and encouragement in return, serving and loving one another as Christ has loved us all. 
So thank you for responding to God's calling to you. And may you be truly blessed and be a blessing to others in your ministry. And so let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that in Christ you have called us out of darkness into your marvellous light. We pray that you will bless Tom, Nikolai, Tom and Claire in their ministry serving the people of God. We pray that they will be constantly encouraged, feeling their hearts burning within them as Easter people, and that with the presence of the Holy Spirit, they will help to kindle that fire of God's love in others. We pray that they will be strengthened to follow your example of humility, sacrifice, service and love, and that we all will love one another as Christ has loved us. Amen. They may be saved through Christ forever. Formed by the word, they are to call their hearers to repentance and to declare in Christ's name the absolution and forgiveness of their sins. With all God's people, they are to tell the story of God's love. They are to baptize new disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and to walk with them in the way of Christ, <coughs> nurturing them in the faith. They are to unfold the scriptures, to preach the word in season and out of season, and to declare the mighty acts of God. They are to preside at the Lord's table <coughs> and lead his people in worship, offering with them a spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. They are to bless the people in God's name. They are to resist evil, support the weak, defend the poor, and intercede for all in need. They are to minister to the sick and prepare the dying for their death. Guided by the Spirit, they are to discern and foster the gifts of all God's people, that the whole church may be built up in unity and faith. We trust that long ago you began to weigh and ponder all this, and that you are fully determined by the grace of God to devote yourself wholly to his service, so that as you follow the rule and teaching of our Lord and grow into his likeness, God may sanctify the lives of all with whom you have to do. And now, in order that we may know your mind and purpose, you must make the declarations we put to you. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I do so accept Would you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scriptures, and in all studies that would deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the truth of the gospel. By the help of God, I will. Will you lead Christ's people in proclaiming his glorious gospel so that the good news of salvation may be heard in every place? By the help of God, I will. Will you faithfully
faithfully minister the doctrine and sacraments of Christ as the Church of England has received them, so that the people committed to your charge may be defended against error and flourish in the faith. You, knowing yourself to be reconciled to God in Christ, strive to be an instrument of God's peace in the church and in the world. By the help of God, I will. Will you endeavour to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ, that you may be a pattern and example to God's people? By the help of God, I will. Will you work with your fellow servants in the gospel for the sake of the kingdom of God? By the help of God, I will. Will you accept and minister the discipline of this church and respect authority duly exercised within it? By the help of God, I will. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you? To make Christ known among all whom you serve. By the help of God, I will. I'm going to invite those sharing with us in this service virtually, if you're willing, to make the responses to the following questions as part of the people of God sharing in this service. The, end, the first question is it is, and then the second two questions we will, we will. So please do speak them aloud wherever you are. Brothers and sisters, you have heard how great is the charge that these ordinands are ready to undertake, and you have heard their declarations. Is it now your will that they should be ordained. It is. It is. Will you continually pray for them? We will. We will. Will you uphold and encourage them in their ministry? We will. In the name of our Lord, we bid you remember the greatness of the trust that is now to be committed to your charge. Remember always with thanksgiving that the treasure now to be entrusted to you is Christ's own flock. Bought by the shedding of his blood on the cross. It is to him that you will render account for your stewardship of his people. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength but only by the grace and power of God. Pray then that your heart may daily be enlarged and your understanding of the scriptures enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. 
and lighten with celestial fire. Thou the anointing spirit art, who dost thy sevenfold gifts impart. Thy blessed unction from above is comfort, life, and fire above. Enable with perpetual light the dullness of our blinded sight. Anoint and cheer our soiled face with the abundance of thy grace. Keep far our foes, give peace at home. Where thou art guide, no ill can come. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and thee of both to be but one, that through the ages all along, this may be our endless song. Praise to thy eternal merit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For all the members of the Church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve him in truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, Stephen, Colin, Alan and Olivia. And for all bishops, presbyters and deacons, that they may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. For Nikolai, Tom, Claire, Tom, now called to be priests in his church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness we may proclaim the gospel of reconciliation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the unity of the Church, that we may be one in Christ according to his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, that they may receive the light of the Gospel, for those whose faith has grown cold. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, for the aged and infirm, for the lonely and neglected, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the hungry, for the homeless and the oppressed, for all prisoners and captives, and for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for the grace to repent and amend our lives, that we may be pardoned and absolved from all our sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all who have gone before us in faith, and in communion with Frideswide, Berinus, and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ, our God. To you, O Lord.
praise and glorify you, Almighty Father, because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church. We praise and glorify you because you have given us your only Son, Jesus Christ, the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn of all creation, and the head of the church. We praise and glorify you that by his death he has overcome death, and that having ascended into heaven, he has given his gifts abundantly to equip your holy people for the work of ministry and for the building up of the body of Christ. And now we give you thanks that you have called your servants whom we ordain in your name to share as a priest in the ministry of the gospel of Christ, the apostle and high priest of our faith and the shepherd of our souls. Therefore, Father, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Nicola for the office and work of a priest in your church. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Send down the Holy Spirit upon your servant Tom for the office and work of a priest in your church. May God, who anointed the Christ with his Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Tom for the office and work of a priest in your church.
May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Claire for the office and work of a priest in your church. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless. Through your Spirit, Heavenly Father, give your servants grace and power to proclaim the gospel of your salvation, to minister the sacraments of the new covenant, renew them in holiness, and give them wisdom and discipline to work faithfully with those committed to their charge. In union with their fellow servants in Christ, may they reconcile what is divided, Heal what is wounded, and restore what is lost. May they declare your blessing to your people. May they proclaim Christ's victory over the powers of darkness, and absolve in Christ's name those who turn to him in faith. So shall a people made whole in Christ offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, our God and Father, to whom with the Son and the Holy Spirit belong glory and honour, worship and praise, now and forever. Tom, receive this book. Claire, receive this book. Receive this book as a sign of the authority which God has given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister to his holy sacraments. We welcome you as an ambassador for Christ, 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given us the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Offer one another as far as we can a sign of God's peace. Pour upon the poverty of our love and the weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through your servant, Jesus Christ, our Lord. At his baptism, he was revealed as your beloved Son. Coming among us as one who serves, he taught that the greatest in your kingdom are those who make themselves least and the servants of all. Although he was their teacher and Lord, he washed the feet of his disciples, and commanded us to do the same, that we might reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, 
that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with bright light for Rhinus and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, a loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. break the spread, to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one spread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God.
Let us pray. Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son, and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Wonderful to share in the service today, both virtually and physically. Our prayers of blessing go with Nikolai and Tom, Tom and Claire. A word of thanks to all those who have supported them through this journey of ministry, especially their closest family and friends who walked with them over many years. And their friends and supporters, our DDO team and those who have worked with them in formation and their training incumbents and parishes, many of whom will be sharing in the service today. Thanks as well to the team at St. Michael's and to all who worked to make this service possible. God who has called you is faithful. May the Father, whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. May Christ, who has ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of God.